Here's a new exciting archaeological find in South America in Colombia. It says Colombian prehistoric rock art hailed as the Sistine Chapel of the ancients. Well, this is due to how much art they actually have that is shown here. So we're looking at this picture. It's a little small here. We'll get a closer view of it later and as we read some of it then we'll come back up here and take a look at it and talk about it some. So this prehistoric artwork found in Serra Anaya La Lindosa in Colombia. Prehistoric rock art discovered in Colombia is being hailed as the Sistine Chapel of the Ancients. Eight mile wall of art was created by the first humans of the Amazon some 12,500 years ago and now a wildlife filmmaker is sharing images and videos of the monumental artwork in a new documentary. This documentary is supposed to come out on BBC on December 5th, 2020. I'm doing this on the 1st, and it just came out about that. They've known about it for over a year, though. We'll get into that. Ancient art documents the lives of what is now a lost South American civilization created by some of the first ever humans to reach the Amazon. Archaeologists discovered the eight mile long wall rock art in a remote and almost inaccessible part of the northwestern Colombian Amazonian basin known as the Serrania de la Lindosa mountain range. The detailed paintings depict life in this region when the rainforest was still a savanna, not a jungle, some 12,000, 12,500 years ago. Why did they date it to that? Well, preemptively, they've already dated to that point because ice animals that are now extinct are represented in the drawings, including the mastodon, giant sloths, and ice age form of horses. So, that's kind of strange whenever you know that they, don't, they say that the horse didn't reach down into the South Americas really so they would have had some limited contact there or this is actually from before they ever made the bridge thing across strangely this problem with dating too goes along with this whenever the ice bridge was supposedly there and they keep deviating it to try to fit some event that they want to go with on Clovis and so on but if you look at the dating here they preemptively give on this just because of the creatures they would have been here before the Younger Dryas event. Now they say 12,000 years ago I'm gonna do a, a little thing here do I hear 13,000? 13, oh it's possible? Thank you, thank you. Is it 14? 14.5, 14.5, thank you. Do I hear 16? 16. Ah, 16, there in the back. Do I hear 18,000? 18,000. Going once, going twice. Ah, there you, sir. 18,000. Do I hear 22? Oh, People are looking around strange like I couldn't go with that type of number. We're just going to go with 12.5 right now because it, it's at least that old. There's going to be a whole lot of archaeology done with this. People that are into symbology and things like that will get into these uh, portraits and pictures they show here. So you can see they're looking up on the side of this cliff face. And this cliff face is literally covered with these pictographs. They make no bones about it that there are at least 10,000 individual pictures. Well, hell, you can count over 100 here, but this is nothing. There's an oddity associated with this, too. These cliff wall faces are flat, and a person standing up really can't reach past the lowest point that you see here which is all oranged in somewhat so they're either getting on each other's shoulders well no then it's shoulders on shoulders on shoulders 
Were they using some vines or ropes hanging down? Did they build some scaffold work? It's a lot that they got to get into here on it. Just looking simply at this photograph, you can tell a lot of things, but it has a lot of those handprints that are symbolic, it's much like you see in Oh, Brother Bear, the movie, if you've ever seen that. And then leading into here in the very bottom of the cave and the little escarpment coming down in is literally covered, swathed in pictures over and over on each other with this red ochre that they used. Let's zoom in here a little bit and take a look. Because they're saying that a lot of these things are showing themselves. There are things that look like corn here. You can see that. But there's also these psychoactive plants. Hallucinogenic plants, they call them in these things. There are all the zigzags that you show here. And there are other zigzags in these people representations and groups that are there. Smaller forms of zigzags. Groups of people with a baby, a youngster, some older people. There's four big ones, a medium and a small. What does that mean? Well, it looks like there's a story written on these walls from different people. And it could be something as zodiacal and things like that or something as simple as how they got there and how long it had been and so on that you could look here and you could say, well, they followed the Great River and they went over one, two, three, four mountains. But then again, that cycle of time that we've looked at, and even in ancient art, where it zigzags like this, has to do with perhaps day counting, but it also has to do with annual counting quite often. For when it goes up, that's when you're looking at this part of the zodiac. When it goes down, you're looking at that part of the zodiac. And there are key points shown on the top of this. And someone would say, look, that's just a few trees next to a river and they saw a deer. No, it could be it took us four years following rivers, da-da-da, and we ended up here. There's this symbolic gesture here that is showing the start point. And then a down and an up and a down and an up and a down and an up. Quite often these are attached to moon phases or annual phases. You look around here and there are animals like bears that are standing up and people. And I saw something inside here. Yeah, you can see before they swad this thing all over, there are pictures of people that are in here. In fact, you can make it out pretty good right in here and an X in a circle symbology and this thing that looks like a totem there and here this thing which very much looks like a totem a fox or an aardvark type animal with a sun symbology over them how many dashes one two three four five six six twelve hmm that might be telling too I wonder how we get into this more and more by the way, in this pictographs here, they a lot of times are showing geometric shapes, lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. Nine times one, two, three, four, five. There's 45 dots on that. There's another pattern here which just looks constellation or haphazard, but whenever you're out away from it a little bit, it's a geometric pattern with a chevron up top and bottom. And then an X in the middle. Here we see a huge grouping of dots. One wonders if this is counting heads of people that might have been there. Days. Years. All kinds of things could be attached to these symbologies that we see. We see these stork-like figures and especially the very we I just did a video about storks and its ancient connections which would have predated this by far and bone flutes and all of these type of things but this looks conspicuously like a portion of that Gobekli Tepe doesn't it you find other things too that are weird here's a bat 
or it looks like a bat. In fact, it's a lot like I draw a Batman, but it would have one more farther out here going down and then have swoop, swoop, swoop. But there's that point in the middle of the tail, so it's kind of like he's cowling, like whenever they hang upside down. That looks like a bat. He's even got little nubs up where their little hands are and stuff. That's, that's looking looking very bat manish. Hills up with that. Well, they had a a bat deity, Batman, basically. Kamzots was its name. But here we can see that chevron pattern I was talking about from before. All these depictions, but we're not looking at some of the cooler ones apparently because they're releasing this to try to get the hype up a little bit. But there are camels, mammoths, all kinds of depictions. They're over here and they're saying it's going to take us years just to get them fully documented. Strangely, it looks like a pum blob and a level, but that's upside down. There's more of those zigzags of time. Here we see a representation we quite often know as water. It looks very Celtic or somewhat. It also seems to end in chaos here. A lot of these depictions are so tall up that I was, like I was talking before, they had to get a drone to fly up to take pictures of these things that you're preening your neck already here as it is and you're zooming in with a camera. So they must have built some type of scaffold work. Things like that can be known. Here's a headless body. What's that got to do with it? What's this other one here? Why are their hands up? And look like they're scaring these animals. They're scaring them towards these people who appear to be wearing boots and have a spear and maybe even a shield. There's that Batman again. What's up with Batman? Look at this strange geometrical shape and crackle and pattern. And then it has fringe, but only on one side of it. We've seen a lot of things like this in other places, but it's on the other side of the world, and even dating back before this. Here's another geometric crosshatch, fringe on one side. Here's one of the early depictions of a triple or a triad. One wonders if that's supposed to be Orion phases of the moon are they being counted here is that what that is hmm so you can see that just in this depiction lizards too birds up here also upside down triangles and pyramids or what you would say looks like a libra or scale or certain things that we can hook zodiacal to it. I'm, I'm sure there's quite a bit of information eventually going to be picked out of that. So I can't wait to get a hold of a, some real good photographs or watch that documentary. You might see shortly after this coming out, there'll be another one. It's a strange shape that's here. There's a strangeness that I see up here too, that there is a group of people all going in this one certain direction. And then associated with that, there's this bird. And then there are these countings again that are here. It almost seemed to fade over here. Like there used to be water that ran down here. And it almost washed it out. Bet you could still make them out. Something strange to me looks like some of these were drawn over twice at least, if you will. And some of them were drawn singularly. Now, I don't know if that's just weak. And then others are done strong, but it looks like certain ones are stronger than others. That's very reminiscent of Gobekli Tepe and other depictions that we've looked at. There's a lot in this art here. Well, let's just go back on here and discuss more of it. According to the observer, the discovery was made last year, but the findings remain hidden until now as they were filmed for a new Channel 4 series in Britain called Jungle Mystery, Lost Kingdoms of the Amazon. Presenter Ella El Shamai told the newspaper that it will, be, that it will take generations to study these paintings, adding that the site is so new 
They haven't even actually gave it a name yet. So they're probably going to name it after some mountain range or some place or maybe the person that found it. Down in one of the things that I looked at, there was a guy that said that apparently how they found it was one of the locals was off in a walkabout way out in the distance and hunting and gathering, doing whatever, and he had found it, and he came back and told them that they were huge, and there were pictures all over them, and da-da-da, and they went out to go check it out. They went and saw it, and then had to get archaeologists together to go back out to do it. But there's been a problem, see, because where they're at in Columbia, there's this uh, group of people, which they'll mention shortly, that are... Uh, kind of mercenaries and against the government and it's caused a lot of problems and of course trying to get into archaeological sites is always a problem over and above situations like that going on. So the team of British Columbian researchers drove for two hours to reach the eight mile wall from wherever they started out at, hiked on foot for another four hours passing through FARC territory, that's the people that are the guys, and habitats of deadly predators like the Bushmaster Viper. Bushmaster is the most poisonous uh, snake in all of the Americas, in this hemisphere pretty much, if you will. There's Fjord of Lance and a few others that are up in there with it, but rattlesnakes are really nowhere big. A small copperhead can do as much damage or worse. But... Uh, these guys, uh, I'll figure what it is, 80% mortality rate if you get bit by one. So you always wear these boots and things like that. They're real hard to see, too, and a little knot just laying there on the ground. But this discovery is not a drill. It's big news, and it will take many decades to unpack. It was also a bloody nightmare politically, security, uh, security and rainforest-wise, to get to. Ella Shema wrote in Twitter. So I can imagine. And then it's it's funny, but you get to the place that's here, and you can see her sitting up on this ledge, and it looks like she's just in heaven somehow. And I can't help but remember whenever I was younger, and especially down in Austin in school, there was an overlook to the Colorado River that they called Mount Bonnell. And if you go up there, there's all these, uh, well, there's a staircase they made up to it, and it's a peak pretty much it's flattened off some and they put all this lattice work up there people get married up there and all kinds of things but it has this huge overlook hundreds of feet back down into the colorado river running through there you can look down and you see millionaire houses and place with boat docks built into it and they go up and down the colorado and everything all oh, foo 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 yeah but if you go around a certain way you can come back up under the ledge that you would have been on above and you're down at a place like this that's even more of a cave than this with a few big rocks in it and there are some carvings in there that go from the 18 and early 1900s although kids ruined it all with graffiti even by the time I had been there but you would sit in there and look around and it would all you know I would get this feeling of like she's pretty much getting that you could probably see a dinosaur walk across right in front of you and it wouldn't phase you. We used to go down to Enchanted Rock near Llano, Texas, and it's a batholith where there's been bubbles of a volcano cough up and make bubbles, giant bald heads in the ground. And the whole area there is brush and scrub, but it looks like it's just never been touched pretty much. And you go down there and I can't, again, I get that feeling whenever you're there that if they had some animatronic or, uh, you know, claymation giant dinosaurs walking across there that were done with stop motion, it wouldn't phase you a bit to see them. In fact, I, I talked about when we were down there when I was younger that um, they ought to do that. They ought to put some dinosaurs out there or something like that, maybe even scale through time, like what types of dinosaurs were in Texas and put from things that died off at the Younger Dryas in this recent thing and go back to where they're, you know, in the distance there's brontosaurs and huge things like that. Anyhow, 
So this is just one little escarpment she's in, and I don't really see any drawings, but you can imagine that somebody sat on that rock right where she is a long time ago and looked out in that same direction. That's the kind of feeling I get. You can see those vines hanging down, too, and it gives you an idea. You just grab and rope swing off of it and do things, but it's not so jungle as it is now and overgrown so bad. More of a savanna. They know that because of all the pictographs that are there, and it showed them that all these animals are around them, apparently. I have a problem with the little horse one. It's not a deer, they say, although they have things that are like that in pictures. That's how they can tell the difference, supposedly. <clears throat> These yet unnamed site at Seriana de la Lindosa isn't the first discovery of ancient artwork in the Colombian Amazon. Now, they're probably going to name it Seran Serania. Around 75,000 rock art paintings have been found in Chiribiquet, hope I said that right, National Park, one of the last frontiers of the modern world. And they're part of an ongoing study, the Serranias, or mountain ranges of the Chi Yeah, and Lindosa are among the areas in Colombia that were closed to the public during the armed conflict and are now opening up to scientific researchers. The area is so vast and so remote that contact has still not been made with some indigenous tribes who live there. Yeah, there's still some primitives that are living out. You know, like there, like there still is in the bush of Africa and so on, and Irian Jai and places and islands you think of, like Gilligan's Island and so on. In a modern day, and Net Geo and places pretty much don't cover that anymore because of feelings and things, but um, pretty interesting here. Let's look at this other article, although I won't read the whole thing, and this is uh, shows another picture set of it that didn't it's shown there so here they are filming it and this wall doesn't appear to go all the way up don't know if they built didn't build scaffolding or so on but maybe it looks like they couldn't have built scaffolding down here if that's what they did but you can see in this picture here that they're filming it with high quality cameras in other places they use drones I think it's pretty neat and they have some of these symbologies that are here and this giant person that's there zigzag lines which don't exact up to the water symbology and other symbologies and the time thing but yet there's other ones up here where they have a scratching and a counting system going on too geometrical shapes helix forms and two of them side by side people with their arms up here what else can we see well that's strange I don't know what that's supposed to be, an elongated head person or something, but just an effigy. And here's the sun. There's another circle up there. I don't know if that's supposed to be the moon, but here's the sun coming up through there. Is it coming through a gap in the rocks, and this is depicting it? or Huh. There's more of that hallucinogenic plant. Well, that actually looks a little more like that ballerina thing that we're looking at that connects to Europe to ancient Egypt from pottery and wall art and wall painting art that's done in this same red ochre symbology that's hooked up through here. Pretty unique and uh, so yeah they say 12,500 years worth of time and that's the, the reason they have to be is because there's uh, the prehistoric relative of the elephant has been roamed South America is at least 12,000 years so whenever they say 12,000, it's at least. But because there are images of these creatures, then you say, okay, well, blah, blah, blah. Well, I wonder what an other animals they say are here. They say there's anamorphic, half human -y kind of looking a few things that are in there. And things that look like hunting or they're holding their arms up and so on. But that could be, everybody says it's a praise and everybody says everything's a temple. Could easily be something is like, well, I'm scaring him towards that guy. Look, he's got the spears. But... It's kind of a glimpse back into ancient lost civilizations, and I can't wait for this thing to come out. Again, it's called Jungle Mystery, Lost Kingdoms of the Amazon, and it's to be screened coming up in the next few days here. 
and I, I guess in the UK first, I don't know, it's on Channel 4, but uh, again, it's a new site, so they really haven't given a name for it yet, I hope they don't give it the one, an unpronounceable one, they ought to come up with a different idea, but uh, so here's somebody in a modern day putting their hand up, just like you see the other hands there, if you look closely though, they've got that water wiggle built in the middle of their hand when they did it, much like the symbol here in this counting thing that I'm telling you about. And again, corn and stuff like that's shown up in there. But this is about as high as somebody could reach. And it, he's not even touching it. He's actually looks like he's more than a foot or two away from it. But the bottom here is where it becomes solid orange and where the people can reach. So they did, at least in this portion that we were looking at, scaffolding and things like that were used to create it she says when you're there the emotions flow we're talking about several tens of thousands of paintings it's going to take generations to record them and every turn you do it's a new wall of paintings we started seeing animals that are now extinct pictures that are so natural and so well made that we have few doubts that you're looking at a horse for example the ice age horse had a wild heavy face, like you see in all the Proto-Indo-European stuff, and it has that look to it somewhat. I like the Cro-Magnon paintings that they said, hey, you know, that's like modern art. It's so detailed we can even see the horse's hair, and it's fascinating. The images include fish, turtles, lizards, and birds, as well as people dancing and holding hands, among other scenes. One figure wears a mask resembling a bird with a beak. And we've talked about that even just recently and how that bird symbology goes on and through. So I wonder what interesting things we'll find out about this connective that's here. Um, she says, when you're here, there's no hospital or anything. You're in the middle of nowhere, but it's 100% worth it. They had to worry about seeing a snake. Again, they had that FARC territory and these hostiles that are there. The paintings vary in size. There are numerous handprints and many of the images on that scale, uh, be they geometric shapes, animals or humans or other, others are much larger. And so in this picture, you can see where orange is out at the bottom of it again in connectives. But in this part, you can see that there's this stand that's here somewhat, and it's got the moon crescent above it. And we've seen that symbology on the other side of the world too in fact there's four or five things in here that match up to things before and I've said before of course some of the symbology like swastikas and other things gets carried apparently from a time before anybody even came across in interactions of the two people another strange anomaly here we found people now in what is Alaska and so on coming down into Canada in the last couple of years I did videos about it but they're dating much earlier than even there was supposedly a land bridge but that's in other videos anyhow so apparently these people got here a lickety split quick within a few years they just ran all the way down here then stopped and decided to make art Isn't that incredible once the show comes out, I'll get in with y'all and uh, see if there's any better knowledge that comes out of it. I bet they're going to sit and him and haw and pick around, and it'll take somebody watching that that's real good with symbology to put together and go, you know, they said blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot more here going on than blah, blah, blah. How many is in that wiggle? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. They said it's not 12 and it's not 5 and 7 and so on. This one's 12. I can tell just by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, that might have gone up to a 13. Well, it starts at a down. In fact, if you make a circle out of it and put that end attached to the other, that's a year of moons and the cycles that go on. But I don't see so much archaeoastronomy but we only looked at a couple of pictures they've given us the grace to look at here before it comes out once it comes out we'll probably be looking at 30 or 40 panels this big or more some of them can be quite interesting 
lot of new interesting finds coming out in archaeology that are making connections. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.